Hi, we're back to present the maintenance section for the Classic Series Single Head Adjustable Pump. Before we get started, there's something that we need to cover, right Karen? That's right, Bill. Before working on a pump, always follow the complete safety and operating instructions in the installation and maintenance manual. And don't forget the required personal protective safety equipment. Use of this safety equipment is mandatory. In addition to the precautions that come with your pump, you must always follow the recommendations of the chemical manufacturer or the material safety data sheet and check local codes for additional guidelines. Preparing the metering pump for service can vary by application, but in general will consist of the following steps. Pump a compatible buffer solution through the pump for several minutes to clean the chemical from the lines. Turn the motor on-off switch to the off position, which is down or to the rear of the pump. Disconnect the suction line from the pump tube suction fitting labeled in in the pump head cover. Before disconnecting the discharge side, bleed off any pressure. Then, disconnect the discharge line from the pump tube discharge fitting labeled out on the pump head cover. Unplug the power cord. If the power cord plug end has been removed, modified, or the metering pump has been directly wired, do not continue. Consult an electrician to aid in disconnecting the pump from the electrical supply and to properly reconnect the pump's electrical supply. The last of the three sub-assemblies that we're going to review is the motor. The motor is the same for all the models of the Classic Series. The only difference is the gears that affect the RPM. The motor has a cylindrical rotor with a shaft that is encased within a magnetic coil. When power is applied to the coil, the rotor rotates. The rotor's directional rotation is determined by the orientation of the copper-shaded poles on the coil. The helical end of the rotor engages the series of gears in the gear case. A vertical mount with the pump head in a downward position is recommended to keep chemical from collecting in the tube housing and from seeping into the feed rate control and or the motor. The vertical mount with Stinner's mounting bracket allows the rain roof to be installed for use in outdoor or wet environments. Since the motor is fan cooled, it needs proper ventilation and protection, which is why the rain roof is installed. The motor won't be able to rotate freely if the coil, rotor, and bearings are rusted or corroded. As for wear, cracked or broken bearing brackets can cause the rotor to misalign and bind to the magnetic coil. And of course, the motor voltage must match the power supply to avoid a burned coil. The installation manual has a troubleshooting guide to help diagnose conditions, and Stinner's customer service is readily available to help on the phone. Let's take a look at parts replacement. Rotor assembly replacement. Disconnect power to the pump. Separate the feed rate control and pump head from the motor. Remove and set aside the motor base and screws. Remove and set aside two motor housing screws. Invert the pump and use the pump head and feed rate control as a stand to work on the motor. Remove the motor housing. Discard the plastic fan. Remove two coil screws and lock washers. Remove the amber bearing bracket. Remove the coil, but keep the wires connected. Remove and discard the rotor and amber bearing bracket. A new rotor assembly includes the fan, bearing brackets, and rotor. Press the new amber bearing bracket onto the threaded brass inserts in the back of the gear case. Install the new rotor by inserting the shaft helical gear side onto the amber bearing bracket. Place the coil over the rotor onto the bearing bracket. The correct orientation is with the two copper rods in the upper right corner with the vent opening at the bottom of the gear case. Snap into place the second bearing bracket onto the rotor. Insert the two coil screws with lock washers and tighten.
Starting at an angle, press the fan with hub side down onto the rotor shaft. Reinstall the motor housing and tighten the self-tapping screws to secure the housing. Put the motor base back on.